There are a lot of episodes to go through for this one, so I'll keep the intro brief. I'm gonna be ranking every season 2 episode of Death Battle from my least favorite to my favorite, but I'm only going to cover spots 32 to 17 in this video, and I'll cover the other 16 in a later video as to not stretch this to an hour long. I know the poll I put out had the majority of people want just a single video, but the last time I edited a video longer than 20 minutes my editing software kept dying on me so I'd rather avoid that. So let's not waste any more time and start the list off. Making this more so a battle of wit and experience. Beast vs Goliath is boring and there's next to no reason to rewatch it. You all know this by now. This is widely considered one of the worst death battles of all time. And I absolutely agree. The fight lacks any memorable moments and does such a poor job showcasing the personalities of these two characters. The whole reason they are fighting is because despite looking like monsters, they are incredibly intelligent strategists. But the fight has them both acting like wild animals. This could have been a decent episode, but it was made on a ridiculous time crunch. With the animator not even having the assets to get started after the fight was announced at the end of Iron Man vs Lex Luthor. Though to give Marley his due credit, the overall animation quality is still pretty good considering the circumstances and the death is pretty decent. This isn't my least favorite episode of all time or anything like that. Seasons 3 and 4 hit way lower points, but it's unfortunate that an episode as bland and boring as this got sandwiched between two absolute masterpieces. That's how it's done. Out of the entire season list, there are four highly controversial episodes that people are probably expecting to rank really low on this list, but I actually like most of them a lot. Yang vs Tifa, Goku vs Superman 2 and Kirby vs Boo are all really fun episodes. I wish I could say the same for Gara vs Toph. Yes, the verdict is questionable at best, but that doesn't matter to me as much as the fight, and it falls flat on its face in that aspect as well. This episode is a snooze fest, and what little does happen can be confusing at times. This sand coffin doesn't look like it was crushed at all, they break the 180 rule at points. I legitimately have no clue what the fuck is happening in this scene. Also Gara's death is implied to be really brutal but when they cut back to him he looks no different than in the previous shot. Gara also hardly moves through the whole fight. All I can really say I liked is that the voice actors did pretty good jobs and there was some good banter in the fight. And this place is above Beast vs Goliath since it doesn't butcher their characters quite as badly. And it actually feels like a full fight instead of a DBX. I don't quite hate this episode, and I do understand why it ended up being bad considering the position Ben was in at the time, but I could happily go the rest of my life without watching it again. Being almost twice as big, his size and strength surmounted sectors. Fulgor vs Sector is shit. The fight is so short and hardly anything happens in it. Fulgor hardly lands any hits before the ending, and speaking of which they somehow managed to make an ultra combo boring which I did not know was possible. I was absolutely riveted watching Fulgor charge his reactor. He stood and did nothing for a good portion of the fight. What fantastic choreography. The episode isn't terrible at least, and there were a few decent parts, but it's still really bad. Pretty disappointing since Sector was my favorite Mortal Kombat character at the time. Still better than Venom vs Bane though don't at me. Let's finish this. Hyper! Batman vs Captain America is so bland and boring. I feel nothing watching this for the majority of the fight. Which is a shame since the animation quality is actually pretty good. But the fight lacks any kind of personality. The scene where Cap has this massive grin after throwing his shield is really dumb but I find it funny. And then Batman throws the shield back covered in explosive gel which was a cool moment. But the gel doesn't even explode and only creates smoke. The death is pretty decent though. Even if Batman punching Cap this high is a bit silly. This isn't nearly as bad as Batman vs Black Panther but it's still not an episode I'd call good. Well there goes the year of Luigi. Luigi vs Tails is one of the most widely hated episodes of the whole show. I can see why. Judging by how low down on the list it is, you'd probably expect me to also hate it. But honestly it's an episode I'm fairly neutral on. An analysis has to be a special kind of awful for me to take issue with the research. But Luigi struggling to lift a large radish is one of the worst arguments they've ever used. It's specifically uprooting it that causes him issue. But that doesn't matter since the entire game the feat takes place in is a dream. The animation also never feels even. 
Tails never feels like he's put at a disadvantage. Luigi never lands any super meaty hits but every time Tails hits him back it sends him face down on the floor. I feel really bad since I like Luigi a lot. Still, the animation is decently fun to watch and I like seeing how Tails gadgets counter Luigi's power-ups. At least now with this out of the way, we can move on to episodes I actually like. But since Ivy's jugs are so wonderfully huge, Orchid's flash finisher was meaningless. Ivy vs Orchid isn't a match I care much for but it's still really well animated. The fight lacks any kind of personality but the scene I am dubbing the Ducko scene was still pretty funny. I have nothing really to say about this episode. I like it but not a lot. I can't believe Ribbit Theater is fucking dead this is so sad. He really loves that Dragon Slayer. Guts vs Nightmare is an episode that people seem to either have as one of their favorites or hate with a passion. I'm somewhere in the middle. I like it, but not a whole lot. There are some cool moments, but apparently both characters are represented really poorly. Though I don't know either well enough to really care. It's a decent enough fight that I like. Not much more to it than that. My favorite part was when Cinder Killer Instinct showed up to fight Guts as well. Epic. Well, F U C K space. Why who you? Ragnar vs Sol is really well animated, but I really just don't care about it enough to like it all that much. I still do like it though, except the ending. That's pretty fucking lame. Surprisingly, what stands out most to me about this episode is the analysis. I don't care about the research or how accurate it is, but the jokes in this episode were really good. There were so many quotable lines in this episode from the amount of belts the characters had to the iconic that man interaction. Too bad they couldn't bring the episode much higher than this. You should hear the boxing glove arrow when it hits. I hadn't seen Green Arrow vs Hawkeye in years before making this video. I dreaded revisiting it because I'd heard nothing but bad about it, with people even calling it one of the worst of all time. And judging by its placement I'm sure you can tell I disagree. It's not amazing or anything, and it is another Marvel vs DC matchup, but they did the best they could with the match. Plus this was before Marvel vs DC got totally oversaturated. The standard arrow combat isn't super thrilling but I like how some of the trick arrows are used. The boxing glove arrow gag never fails to make me smile as well. Apparently the shot for the fight graphic also gets a lot of flack which I don't understand. I thought it was neat and that Black Widow vs Widowmaker should have done the same thing. Also I like how Green Arrow sticks corrosive acid in his face to melt some glue. That's pretty neat. I don't like sand. I like Darth Vader vs Doctor Doom a lot but oh boy does it have some pretty big problems. The first part of the fight is great. Both sides feel like they're putting up a really good fight against each other and I absolutely love the use of the foot dive. But Vader is really difficult to see with his pitch black armor in front of the black void of space in the background. He becomes a lot easier to see once he reminds Doom that reality does indeed include time. But the issue with that part of the fight going forward is just how one-sided it is. Not counting the Doom bot. Vader only lands one hit in the entire fight and it's when Doom isn't even paying attention. Despite those issues, the fight is still really fun and it shows both characters' abilities off really well. The death is also pretty fitting given the experiences Vader has had with Lava before. If Vader spoke in prequel quotes this would be number one without question but oh well they tried I guess. Samus's superior technology and athletic skill trumped him in every way. Well fed may be more durable and physically stronger. Samus vs Boba Fett Remastered is a really good episode, but for an anniversary special it feels sort of thrown together at the last minute. There are a few weird things that happen in the fight. Samus's pistol does a lot of things it realistically shouldn't, like freeze Fett and turn into a lightsaber. And when Samus gets blown up, the only part of her armor that remains intact are her boots which were the closest to the bomb. Oh well. It's still really well animated but definitely one of Torian's less standout fights. The fight is also visually really nice to look at. I like the tribute to Monty Oum at the end as well. I'm going to blow you out of the water! Despite the piss poor explanation for the result, I really like Yang vs Tifa. It's a Torian fight. So how bad can it really be? I'll admit it does have quite a few issues though. The setup is pretty weak. The choice of model for Tifa baffles me and Yang's hair looks like absolute shit. It can never stay still. It's like it took a page from Darth Vader going down the stairs. And while I don't think that Yang winning was due to bias over incompetence, 
It's hard to not see this episode as a Ruby advertisement considering the Ruby music that plays in the latter half of the fight and the banner that promotes volume 3 at the end. In spite of all that though, the good still outweighs the bad in my opinion. Torian is great at choreographing hand-to-hand -hand fights. The fight never feels too one-sided and the climax with both of them throwing out all of their strongest attacks is really cool. I really appreciate the dolphin blow being included as well. Oh wait I forgot that the quality of a fight is determined by the outcome. Never mind this is below Beast vs Goliath now. Shao Kahn will be wondering, what the fuck is them dancing gonna do? Shao Kahn vs M Bison isn't as good as I remember, but it's still pretty good and holds up even all these years later. Though some parts do get a bit repetitive and not every hit feels that impactful. It uses both characters array of attacks pretty well, though final Bison getting stomped is pretty lame. But that portion of the fight is fast and entertaining enough to make up for it. So yeah, not a masterpiece but still pretty good. Attention all hands, battle stations! I can't believe Ribbit Theater has fucking died again. Fox vs Bucky is really good, even if Fox is represented more as his Smash Bros self and not so much himself from his actual series. The fight is really well animated all throughout but not much stands out as amazing, except for the death which is one of the best in the show's history. Oh boy, this is the big one. Is the result for Goku vs Superman too poorly explained? Absolutely. Limitless Superman is a meme for a reason. Is the result accurate? I genuinely couldn't care less. What I mainly wanted from this episode is the same thing I want from every episode. An enjoyable fight scene. And that is what we got. The fight scene is great and it especially picks up after Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue. Alive is an absolutely phenomenal track and it complements the high intensity fast paced fight really well. And I don't care how dumb of a scene it is. The shot of Superman walking through the Kamehameha is visually fantastic. So why is this one so low down? Well, this is treated as a direct continuation of the first Goku vs Superman. And when you compare the two episodes, that's when this one starts to fall apart. The first is as close as Death Battle has ever gotten to feeling cinematic. Both sides go all out and use damn near every trick in both of their books to try and scrape out a win. Culminating in both of them destroying the planet as a byproduct of their fight. Superman may have won but he still looked like he was pushed to the limit and was even briefly knocked out in the final explosion. The second feels like just another episode with nothing special about it. And it certainly doesn't feel like both fighters were pushed to their limits. The final scene may be awesome but it also feels like a huge slap in the face to the people who wanted Goku to get a second chance. Actually, the whole episode feels like that. They really jumped the gun and did the fight way too soon. They knew Goku would likely develop more in the future, and wouldn't you know it, shortly after he shook the universe and a few years later he gained his ultimate form. I still really like this episode, but it doesn't measure up to the first at all in any way other than it looking visually nicer in stills. Nobody suspects the butt guns! I have seen so many people say that Mega Man vs Astro Boy is one of the worst episodes of the season. I honestly don't see it. It's not even a matter of Mega Man losing half the time. It's specifically the animation being called out as bad. It's the weakest Mega Man episode of the show, sure. But considering how good the other three are, that's hardly a huge detriment. Plus, this was apparently animated in the span of only two days. So with that in mind I think the animator did a damn good job. Beast vs Goliath has no excuses now. And with this being a Mega Man fight, the vast array of weapons allows for almost limitless creativity in the fight scene. There could have been more weapons used I guess, but they already managed to fit a lot in. Enough to keep the fight fresh and constantly have you on your toes. There are some good comedic bits too. There is some dumb stuff as well. The metal blades run out of ammo way too fast and neither character talks which is a bit disappointing. But I still love the episode despite all that. This is where I'm gonna end part 1. I want to thank my good chums Nemesis and Z-Dog for watching through all these episodes with me. I'll link their channels in the description. Hopefully I'll be able to get to part 2 soon. That's where we start to get to the really good stuff. Who knows, maybe something over through Snake vs Sam for my number 1 spot. I'll get to that video in due time. But first, I have to finish a video on my other favorite vs show. I'll see you all when those videos come out. This is over! 
care what kind of power you...